Blessings to your friend. I'm Marcus Stevenson, Jr., and I am just delighted you have took this opportunity and this time to allow us to minister into your heart. I want to encourage you to stay tuned in. God has something very special He wants to minister into your life. As always, we don't take this moment for granted. Feel free to call someone, text somebody, maybe yell in the other room and tell them this ministry is on the air. You're special to God and you're special to us. Stay tuned in as you hear and see what God has planned for your life. The Bible said Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Jawar, and he dwelt there. Uh, you know, just that in itself, if you meditate on that, is something quite inspirational because sometimes we feel like I'm dwelling in the valley, a place that's without, a place that's lower than uh, other places, a place that seems like it's a dry place, a place that seems like I'm alone and by myself. And I don't know what everybody's going through. If God didn't tell me, then I can't really tell you fully. But I do feel in my spirit that many of y'all in here, it's like you've been in the valley for a long time now. And you want in when, what, how, and what way am I going to come through this valley? Sometimes God leads you from, not only from the valley, but as time he leads you to the valley. I just want to read a few verses. And the Bible said in verse 18, And Isaac digged again the wells of water. Now, nowhere between 17 and 18 verse do we see Isaac left the valley yet. While he's in the valley, he keep on digging. And that's one of the first things you need to take notice of. Why are you having a valley experience in your life? Are you digging wells of water? Now, some of you are wondering, what in the world is the blue suit preacher talking about digging a well? I'm not trying to turn you into a countryman. I'm just telling you in the spiritual sense, we're supposed to dig wells. A well is something that has an everlasting flow of water, or it is a water source, a natural water source. It is something that is already available but you have to dig that well in order to get to it here is isaac in the valley and he decides to put forth some effort decides to get up off of his blessed assurance that that wakes somebody up decide to get up off that anointing of do nothing i don't know what side to look at and he put forth effort in the valley sometime when you get in the valley the devil tell you stop trying I'm going to look over here for a second. Look at your neighbor and say, don't stop trying because you're in the valley. Now, some of you trying to keep a straight face because you have stopped trying. And I didn't come to condemn you. I come to encourage you. Don't let the valley bring the worst out of you. Let the valley bring the best out of you. That's a good place to give them praise. Don't wait on your neighbor. You just praise them anyways. So here we see he dig. Again, now notice that he just didn't dig, he digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. Now, most of us are very familiar with Abraham, but you're not as familiar with Isaac. But both are vital and both are very important. And oftentimes, we revere what people before us did. Some of you can talk about great prophets and great men and women of God who came on before us, and you should talk about them. But one of the most devastating things is when they go off the scene, you let what they did die down. There's many of you that have been inspired by all the great men and great women of God, but the moment they go off the scene, the enemy try to show up to take away the impact that they may have had in your life. But you got to be just like Isaac and dig those wells again. I'm not going to forget the messages you ministered to me. I'm not going to forget the testimonies I heard come from you. Are you listening to me? I'm not going to be forgetful of all the miracles and signs and wonders that I not only participated in, but the things I witnessed when I was in your presence. And that's what Isaac did. He didn't start his own ministry. I'm sorry, he didn't dig his own well. <laughs> he digged the same wells his father had already digged. And this is what the enemy don't like. He don't like that there's some of us that's going to carry the legacy that's been set out before us. He don't like that when Brother Stevenson go off the scene, there's going to be some of you all that's going to be on the scene. He don't like that right now just because you're not the first person that God is employing things in you so when your time comes, you're going to be on and ready. 
That's why he's trying to hinder you from staying in the house of God and hinder you from really being devoted like you should because he ain't just trying to stop this well. Y'all ain't hear me. He trying to stop you as a well of living water. I wish I had some help in this church. And that's why you got to be determined that I ain't going to let you stop me no matter what valley I'm in. The devil don't care nothing about me preaching as long as he can stop the staff from working. He don't care nothing about me preaching as long as he can stop the member from exercising your membership. It ain't just about the preaching that does it. It's about others participating to help keep the whales going. Are you still here? Let me preach just a few minutes here. And the Bible said that he digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. Now why would he have to dig them again? For the Philistines had stopped them. Talk to me somebody. After the death of Abraham. Ain't that like the enemy to try to catch God folks slipping? Just because the physical person may die down don't mean they legacy have to die down. Amen. And when you determine to keep or to get what God has for you, you ain't just determined to get it, you determine to keep it. And sometimes we work hard to get it, but we don't work as hard to keep it. If you wake up, I'll help you. And that's the spirit I see. Sometimes we'll start off fighting hard. We're pressing, we're going, we're doing this, that, and the other. And it's not that you have to work with salvation, but honey, once you get it, you better go to work. Once you get it, you better pray. You better seek God. You better stay prayed up and stay dedicated and devoted because there's a devil on every side that come to defeat you. Yes. But sometimes, often when we get an encounter with God, we don't fight to keep what we got. We don't fight to keep that anointing. We don't fight to keep that inspiration. We don't fight to keep that encouragement. You remember when you had problems and issues in your life? could nobody beat you to church. You was on time in the parking lot waiting, getting your makeup together, waiting for the doorkeeper to come and unlock it so you can go to the restroom before the church starts because you didn't want to miss that. Don't you look at me like that. I'm talking to you. And now that everything is peachy and nice and good and everything is sweet and smooth, can't nobody peach you and make you come to church. And sometimes you come on anyways with your body, but your mind everywhere else. You thought because I didn't have notes, I was going to preach. I don't need notes to preach. It's inside of me, honey. And here we see that we see Isaac that's saying, even though my natural father is dead, yet and still, I'm not going to let what he worked so hard to bring up to life die down. Ain't it amazing how people are labor to bring you to a place, and if it, we ain't careful at all the labor they do to bring you to a place, you don't even labor for your own soul. They set up tents. They set up churches. They're reading and praying every day, every night to have a word for you. And sometimes you treat yourself worse than the person who preached until you treat you. You don't care about yourself. I know I'm talking to you. You don't even pray for yourself. You don't even spend an extra $5 of gas to come to church to hear what God prepared for you. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I think he in the house. Look at your other neighbor and say, I don't just think. Oh, come on, come on. Can I talk for a few minutes? Uh, the Bible said that the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And the Bible said that Isaac called their names after the names, now this is important, by which his father talked to me, somebody. Now, now this is my point. Now, names represent the identity. Isaac didn't change the identity of what his father had already identified them as. And this is what has bothered me in Christianity right now. We are changing the identity of what our Father has already identified it as. Sometimes it ain't a mental disorder. Sometimes it's a demon fighting that person. Forgive the preacher who know the word. Amen? Sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with that person is trapped in somebody else's body. Sometimes it's a spirit of transgenderism fighting that person. They don't know who they truly is. Sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with that person is a bad individual. They just receive a bad spirit. And what we do now, we try to diagnose everything. It don't make a difference whether it's big boy, little boy, whether it's your boy, my boy. If it's a demon, it's a demon. And sometimes that demon casting power needs to be exercised on that child, just like that demon casting out power was exercised on you. We give people all types of treatment. Don't look at me all like that. I'm not knocking the treatment, but the greatest treatment is the encounter with God. Yes. 
There were mental disorders in the Bible. There were people who had issues that Jesus resolved. And many of you all work with people who may have some handicaps or may have some special needs. I'm not knocking. I'm not saying everybody feel with the devil because they got special needs. But what I'm saying to you, you have to be sensitive enough to the Holy Ghost to know that ain't just a special need. That's a demon dealing with them like that. Now, some of you look at me like I got four legs and a tail, like I got scales and a fear. I said what I said. We got to get back to this in the Bible because churches now don't even preach deliverance. We have become so accepting that we make it seem like people don't need deliverance. I don't know what world you live in, but the world I live in, the devil is still busy. And every time I wake up, I'm seeing demons on every side. And if you receive a demonic spirit, you need deliverance from that demonic spirit. Now, ain't no sense of you observing somebody else and trying to label everything. Some stuff out of disorder is a demon that you need to be free from. Jesus seen a man who was full of demons and full of devils. He called him legion. The man was destroying himself. He was tearing his own self up. Demons will make you hurt yourself. And Jesus didn't send the man away to get special treatment. Matter of fact, the presence of Jesus troubled the demons in the man. And even the demons talked through the man and said, I know you, Jesus. What you doing here? You know what they said there? They were afraid of his presence because they knew in the presence of Christ there is a fullness of joy. They knew God was here to drive out those spirits. And that's why the devil tried to hinder some of y'all from coming to church because he don't want you to get in God's presence. He know in the presence of God you get your joy back. You get your peace back. You get your deliverance back. That's why you don't have no trouble when you get in the world. The car started right Right up, but all when it's church time, y'all ain't talking to me. Everything start acting up. You start having that your puff balls come out the exhaust pipe. You can't find your key. Your jail won't lay straight. Same jail you used all last, but y'all don't want to talk to me. But now your hair won't lay down. Cause the devil don't want you to get your deliverance. Look your neighbor and say, I made it though. Look your old neighbor and say, I come to get my deliverance. There's a world inside of you, but you gotta dig this world up again. The devil is trying to fill your world with earth. The devil is trying to fill your world with dirt. But as you hear the word of God, he cleanses his church, not the building. You are the church. By the washing, the water, and by the word. What does he do? Get rid of all that filthy, dirty mess so you can let that world spring up again. Now, some of you ain't no natural water. But remember what Jesus told the woman at the well. Why are you looking for natural water? I'm trying to get that spiritual water inside of you. See, he told her, he said, if you knew who I was, you would ask me to give you some living water, and I would have gave you a well springing up unto everlasting life. And that's what we need to do. Get our mind off of the natural necessities in such a way and stop trying to get into a get-rich-quick scheme and say, let me get anointed quick, Jesus. Let me get peace quick, Jesus. Let me get faith quick, Jesus. Let me know that I got a well springing up in me. Hallelujah. Can I preach a few minutes here? I'm going to try my best not to be wrong. But the Bible said that the Philistines stopped them up. You ever had some Philistines in your life? But thank God for Isaac, he still identified the whales the way they should have been identified. If God called it word, then it's word. We got to stop changing the word so we can get new people in the church. And I'm not talking about being mean and nasty and hateful to people, but stop lying to people and telling them we can fornicate and God will bless you. I may miss some hand clapping. I gotta talk to you. I don't care if you're the deacon, that's the deacon. I don't care if you're the first pastor, second, or the fiftieth pastor. God don't change His word for nobody. These cussing Christians, cussing folks out, profoundly is still against the word of God. And we gotta stop adapting to the time and get back to the word of God and tell the devil go back to hell where you belong. I'm not gonna be conformed to the world. Now, I know I'm gonna need some hand claps now. I won't be transformed by the renewing of my why do I come to God if I'm going to be the same? I must be born again. I gotta have a new nature. I gotta be a different person. God don't want me in this valley and I'm full of dirt and filthiness. I need a well springing up in me. I need some everlasting life. I need some joy, some peace. I didn't come to God to act a fool. I come to God to get deliverance. 
Hey, glory. I said, hey, glory. I just need a little help here. And watch verse 19. And Isaac's servants dig in the valley. And that's what I'm praying and believing God for. God, give us some servants again. You need people to serve in the church. People to say, wait a minute, Pastor. Just like you determined to go all the way, I'm determined to go all the way with you. Y'all ain't hear me. All season, we don't get excited about this. Because sometimes we want to sit back and observe somebody else do it all. But notice his servants. They helped him dig the well. And you as the servants of God, we're not only supposed to observe the world being dug in others, but you got to help dig some wells so you can say I was a part of bringing somebody back to life. Hey, glory. Woo. And I preach a few minutes. Isaac said, as deep in the valley, watch this, and found there. what they find? Well, it wasn't just water, it was springing up. It was bubbling, it was flowing, it was popping through. See, there are some things that's getting ready to burst out of some of you. And the devil know it, that's why he don't want you to dig. He wants you to start, and he wants you to quit. Do for a while, but not finish the job. Let me say it to you like this. If Deacon hired me to bust up some concrete, I don't care if it took me 10 hours. He didn't hire me to work 10 hours. He hired me to bust up the concrete. He didn't hire me to work all week. He hired me to bust up the concrete. Now, what am I talking about? It may take 12 hours. It may take 12 weeks. But I got to stick it out until I finish the job. Now, why do I say that? Because we want a quick fix. I pray for a couple of minutes. I come to church on Easter and Mother's Day. Sometimes you got to stay there until the job gets finished. Sometimes you got to go and say, God, I'm dealing with a lustful spirit. I'm dealing with an alcoholic spirit. I'm dealing with a madhouse demon. There's a spirit of mess in me. And I got to stay there until I know this dirt is gold. I got to stay there until that well is springing up again. How many of y'all Sometimes jealousy can fight you. Sometimes envy can fight you. I wish I had some other folks here. Sometimes hatred can fight you. Sometimes unforgiveness is in you. No, 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 no. You got to get this. And now I'm being honest with you. You got to be like the prophet Isaiah. It's not my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. But woe is me. It's something in me undone. And when Isaiah knew God cleansed him, he said, now you can sin me. See, God ready to save some of you all. He ready to use some of you. Some of you are prophets. Some of you are prophetess. Some of you are apostles. And some of you are pastors and teachers. But God can't use an unclean vessel. That's why he got to purify you. He got to wash you. He got to make you whole. That's why he's the power. I wish I had some help here. And you just the clay. You got to say, God mold me. God make me. God shape me. And do your perfect image. And do your likeness. Can you say yes? Hey, hey. I said, hey. I said, hey. hey. Hallelujah, somebody. They dig in the valley. I mean, I said, I'm going to dig in this valley. I feel low. I feel down. I feel cast out. I feel like I'm a nothing and nobody. But out of all the things I feel, I don't walk by feelings. Oh, I feel like preaching here. I walk by faith. And I don't walk by sight. Sometimes when you're in the valley, Seem like there's no chance to get to that water. Seem like no good thing to come out of you. All you think about is all your past. All the times you messed up. I ain't preaching to the civilian folks. I'm talking to some real down earth human beings. All you think about is how many men you had. How many women you had. How many times you've been divorced. How many drugs you did. It's time to get your mind off of that junk. And say, Lord, even though I'm in the valley, I ain't got no excuse not to be it. I'm going to be a better man. I wish I had some hope to go feel people. I'm going to be a better woman. I may be in a valley, but I'm not going to stay here. I'm coming out. 
Hey, my God, I'm coming out. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. Get him praise him. Hey, Lord, who I said, hey, Lord, who is Now, watch verse 20, because you need to know something. I'm not just trying to emotionalize you, but some of you have been digging, and you feel that well springing up, but you are just like verse number 20. After the well sprung up, watch this, and the hermit of Jerah, they did strive with Isaac's husband. Ain't that just like the devil? That time God bring the best out of you. Here come the devil trying to take it from you. It may get a little hot in here, but I gotta say just a few things. That's why I don't understand how God can anoint you to sing, but you can sing in the club. <laughs> and you can't sing for God. Y'all may not talk to me right. That's why I don't understand. When you was in the world, you were percolating and doing your cabbage patch and shaking your hips like a helicopter. But we got to beg you to stay up and dance and give God praise. Oh, that's all I come to talk to you. Because what happens is the devil always trying to get your best. But you want to tell the devil when God freed me, he didn't free me for the devil to steal me. That's why I don't understand how we can run our mouth everywhere else and can't take five minutes to get on social media and tell the devil, I'm free, I'm healed, I'm delivered, and invite somebody to church. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants my best. Say yes. Am I doing all right? I said, am I doing all right? Am I doing all right? And that spirit hit the grown folks, and that spirit hit the young people. They can do all this moving around, but when you come to church stuff, everybody dragging around. Now the devil trying to steal that well, but you gotta have a backbone and say, devil, you gotta be like a high school kid. Uh-uh, no way, no how. You ain't getting my best. For God I live, and for God I die. Hey! Somebody give him praise in here. Give him praise up in here. Hey, hey, hey. I said, hey, hey, hey. Come on, give him that thing. I said, give him your best, give him your best, give him your best. Blessings, I'm Marcus Stevenson Jr. Lady Aisha. And we are here to give you a personal invitation to be with us in one of our upcoming services. Every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m., yes. we see powerful manifestations of the Spirit of God right here at our church. Amen. You know, we would love for you to come and experience this prophetic atmosphere. Yes. You know, in every one of our services, there's always something special. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we want you to be aware of is that you are special to God. Come and join us so you can get the experience of a lifetime every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. right here at Souls Outreach Ministries, 2659 Pike Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. But that message was for you and you knew it was for you. Yeah, God gave you just what you needed out of the Word, and God told me to just confirm to you that the Word of God He gave you, that He wants you to hide that Word in your heart. The enemy has tried to stop you in your tracks because he's afraid of what you're going to be and what you're going to do against His kingdom. God has chosen you to minister His Word. God has chosen you as a very special and a peculiar young lady to anoint you. And God has made you different. That's why you've gone through what you've gone through in your life. And that's why you have dealt with what you have dealt with in your life. And every time it seems like you get two steps on the devil, it's like something will come to try to get you out of character. 
And sometimes you notice yourself getting out of character, but it's like, God, I'm almost mad at myself and I feel like I have no control over myself. But God said he's going to empower you to take the control. I want somebody to get happy. Oh, my Rabbi Hashata. Oh, my God. There's been some other people watching you, too. And the devil have used some pressure to try to use some people to watch you. And it's almost like some of them have watched you to try to make a little bit of a mockery against your religious beliefs. But God said you're going to have the last laugh, though. Know? Glory to God. Now, we haven't talked. You know what I'm talking about? Now, I'm not making this up, am I? Are you sure you're not just saying it because you're up here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get ready. Because God has spoken to you numerous times. And it's almost like it was like an awkwardness there. It's almost like what happened to Samuel. You're not that familiar with his voice. But that's why the Holy Spirit is trying to employ you and try to really just pull up on you so you can become more familiar with his voice. And God's going to reveal himself to you in ways you have not even seen yet. Because there's a hunger in you for truth. And that's why the enemy has tried to distract you with a bunch of stuff I see. It's been a lot of distractions that have tried to come in your life. And I'm not trying to get in trouble. There's been a few people distractions. And there's been a few other distractions. And the Lord told me to encourage you that if you stay focused, if you stay determined, that God's going to bring everything in your life that you have need of. And I see you reaching back, being a help to look like one or two particular people who really helped you in a bad time. And I see you being a financial blessing to them. But I see not only God bless you financially, so I see you in labor in doctrine and in truth. And I see you encouraging others. I see testimonies coming out of you about what it feels like to be depressed, about testimonies of knowing your worth. I see testimonies of feeling like you're unloved or feeling like you're nothing and a nobody. There are some people who have judged you wrong. They didn't know the hell you've been going through since the time you've been a child. But God said there's been an angel around you from the moment you came on earth. He has kept you. And most times you thought you saw something and you almost second guess what you saw. But God said it was his angel that kept around about you. It was keeping you holy. And it was sheltering you and it was protecting you. And that angel was keeping you in the way, and it only was protecting you even from doing damage to your own self. Get ready, get ready, because this next season of your life is going to be one of the best seasons you ever experienced. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It shall be so. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. I want to personally thank you for allowing us to minister into your life. I'm sure something was seen, something was heard, that was a great blessing to you. And I want to encourage you to get this message in its entirety. You can go to the phone and call. You can go to our social media platform. Maybe send us a message. You can even text the number that you see on the screen. We want you to get this message in its entirety. And also, we would love to add you to our prayer list and to our mailing list. This connection is of the Lord. Not only did God connect us just for this one-time program, but I believe this connection should last for the remaining of our God-given life. Thank you so much for your love and support. And I want to encourage you to stay connected to our ministry. God bless you.